welcome to the thankful hour of the Southern Baptist Church, where we are emanating live and direct from our sanctuary located at 1701 North Chester Street in the heart of East Baltimore, Maryland. Our vision is to transform the church and the community into the kingdom of God. Our mission is to encourage people to faith in Christ, experience the presence of God, educate believers, embrace family values, and equip disciples for spirit-filled leadership and living. The psalmist David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And our Lord Jesus Christ told us that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for he has already overcome the world. So we believe that no matter where you are and what you're going through, that God is still worthy to be praised. Whatever you do, don't let anything or anybody steal your joy, because if you can think of his goodness to you, you can thank him through it all. So come on, children, let's sing. And come on, children, let's shout. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Come on, let's thank him. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Minister Antonio Robinson, and I want to welcome you and thank you for worshiping with us this morning via our virtual worship experience. Would you join me in for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and for strength, for things being as well as they are. God, thank you for this moment, for another opportunity to come into this virtual worship space and encounter your presence, your power, and your spirit yet again. God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins and use us for your glory. God, we ask now that you would have your way. Manifest yourself in this worship experience in a way like you haven't ever before. God, do something new, perform miracles, signs, and wonders. Speak a word of life and truth into us from our pastor. Stand up into him now so that he can go forth preaching the word to us to nourish us so that we can go forward through the week being encouraged and blessed. Have your way. Use us now for your glory in Jesus' name. And together we say amen. Now let's come on and worship God together and spirit and and in truth.
give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. I'm Dante Hickman, pastor of the Southern Baptist Church here in the heart of East Baltimore, Maryland, with locations in Harford as well as in Howard counties. And it's my delight to welcome you to Southern Baptist Church virtually. Whether you're tuned in on our website at southernbaptistchurch.org or on our Facebook Live at SBC Everywhere or Southern Baptist Church or our Instagram television or YouTube channel at The Southern Baptist Church. We just thank God that you stopped to worship with us. Listen, if you don't have a church home where you're already growing in the Lord, we'd love for you to become a part of our family of faith. There's contact information on the screen. Would you contact us? Allow us to contact you. We'll make sure that you're a part of the family of God and even our fellowship of faith. Again, welcome to Southern Baptist Church virtually. Well, if you are watching this ministry broadcast today, it means that you made it on the other side into a brand new year. I think we ought to put praise hands and clapping hands and words of thanksgiving to God for how God brought us through 2021 into 2022. This year will be filled with many possibilities, many opportunities, many challenges that we can overcome with the help, with the grace, and the power of God. I want to say a blessed new year to all of you and to your family as well as to your friends. On this first Sunday of a brand new year, we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating. There are those of you born in the month of January, and we want to celebrate you today. And I want to say a special happy birthday to my firstborn son, Dante Hickman Jr., born on January 1. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. I want us to salute and thank God for all of our members and friends who are celebrating birthdays in the month of January. Amen. There are others of you who are celebrating your love together. You were married in the first month of the year. If it is your wedding anniversary this month, would you kindly put it in the comment section? And I would that all of our members and friends would salute those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. May God continue to bless your life and your love together. Let the church say amen. I, I also want us to be in prayer for the family of Sister Sharon Mosby, who had her homegoing celebration on this past Wednesday uh, at the Word of Faith Church in Aberdeen, Maryland. She was one of our uh, Harford County members as she served diligently with a beautiful spirit, with a vibrancy uh, in her personality and countenance, and she served our congregation well. We know that she is on the other side at peace, even from all of her pain. Let's continue to pray for her husband and for her family. I also want us to be in prayer for the family of our dear departed sister, Ann Pittman. Ann Pittman's homegoing celebration will be on this coming Tuesday, 10 and 1030 at the East Step Brothers Funeral Home. Uh, this coming Tuesday, 10 and 1030 at the East Step Funeral, East Step Brothers Funeral Home. Certainly we praise God for the life, the faith, the witness of Ann Pittman for the many years that she has served faithfully and diligently in the ministry of Southern Baptist Church. Let's continue to keep her, her family in our prayers. On today, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate a brand new year, I want us 
to say a special thank you to our very own sister, Diane Lashley. Diane Lashley has been a longtime member of the Southern Baptist Church. She's a graduate of the Western High School. And when she retired from Verizon in 2000, she came to serve as the church clerk and secretary of Southern Baptist Church. She began that service under our predecessor, Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Higgs, and she continued to serve faithfully under my leadership. She has served in that position for over the last 20 years. Somebody ought to just put a praise right there. For 20 years, she has served the Southern Baptist Church faithfully. And on this past two years, even in the middle of a pandemic, Diane was coming to the church even though she did not have to because she wanted to make sure that her church was continuing to, be, to move forward and that people had access to whatever they needed in the life of our ministry. She came at great sacrifice and many times came all by herself just to serve our church and our community. She's been faithful. She has been diligent over these years. Diane retired at the end of this past year, just in the month of December. And I wanted in this year on this Sunday to say a special thank you to her for her service. She is not gone from our ministry. She continues to serve faithfully in our usher ministry as well as in our Christian education department. We want to give a plaque to Diane uh, that will always commemorate our feelings to her for her service during this time and especially this needed time in the life of our church. Would you just put hearts, would you just put in the comment section, thank you, Diane. God bless you, Diane. We praise God for you. And we know that God will continue to bless you and to use you even in the years to come. Let the church say amen. I also want to thank God for the overwhelming response that we have received uh, from so many persons as it relates to evangelism and outreach. As I've already made you aware, we're not coming back to in-person worship and ministry just yet. The pandemic is at record levels. The virus is spreading like wildfire. And I praise God for those of you who have been vaccinated, you've gotten a booster shot, and perhaps you've been infected with the virus and you can testify that you're not severely ill and you're not in the hospital and thank God that you are you have not transitioned due to this virus. But we do want to be in prayer for those who are yet unvaccinated. Let's get vaccinated. Let's get our children vaccinated so that we can move forward beyond this deadly uh, virus and disease. But thank God for those of you who responded to our, our call and our cry for evangelism and outreach. I received a wonderful email from a Fandrea Bowman who works as a counselor at the National Academy Foundation. It's a school that is in the original Dunbar High School. Fandrea has been working there and she's been doing wonderful work with the young people there and helping to serve the myriad of needs that they have as well as their families. Fandrea has been doing a hat and glove and coat drive. And she's also uh, been asking for uh, gently used socks and neckties. Also looking for items for girls like sanitary pads and deodorant and toothpaste and soap. These are the needs, the basic needs that every person has 
and we want to support her efforts. If we can be successful at this school, we can adopt at least four other schools to do the very same thing. I'm asking that throughout the month of January that you would stop by the church, drop off those slightly used neckties, get a fresh pair of socks, bring a fresh hat or knitted hat and gloves, bring those, uh, those items that are necessary for our young children to be able to have good personal hygiene. I'm also asking, uh, as her letter outlined, that we would enable uh, the church to purchase five and ten dollar uh, gift cards to McDonald's, to Chick-fil-A, to Subway, uh, and, and the like, so that young people can have a meal, can have lunch, can have a snack, can have dinner. Listen, I know what you're saying. Oh, those are not healthy items. But you wasn't talking like that when you were young. Let's be a blessing to the National Academy Foundation. Let's show what the church can do. We'll need you to help. Fandrea is welcoming our members to come down to volunteer, to, to, to donate, to make those contributions. But I'm asking you throughout the month of January, come down to the church beginning at 10 in the morning to about four o'clock in the evening. Drop off those items. We'll package them and make sure that we can together serve the needs of children and families even at this time uh, in, our, in our world and in our community. To God be the glory for the great things he will use us to do. I want to say thank you for your faithful and your committed giving. You've been giving faithfully over these 20 months, almost two years. And I thank you that your gifts have made the difference and have enabled us to leverage the funds to renovate our church and to be able to acquire property and continue to do the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ. I ask that you would continue to give you can do so by giving electronically at our website at southernbaptistchurch.org. Just touch the stewardship button and you can find the many ways to give there. Or you can download the GiveLify app, find our church and our address, and you can give securely there. Or you can text the word GIVE to the number that's on the screen. Follow the prompts and you can give spiritually as well as securely there. As always, thank God for those of you who give by mail, who give by phone, or you come down the church to drop off your gifts. I, I want you to know that as you give, you give as unto the Lord, and God loves a cheerful giver. In this season, while we are preparing our leaders and our staff, you might note that when you call the church, we have an answering service. Be kind to the answering service as they take down your queries and we respond to you as we continue to move forward through this season. I also want you to know that on January the 6th, we will be meeting as a ministry of all of our choirs and our singers and ushers and greeters hospitality workers, and the like at our church for, for rehearsals as we prepare for in-person worship. There will be face shields provided for our choir as you rehearse, as we prepare, because I believe our comeback is going to be absolutely amazing. Well, the choir is going to come and bless us in song. And then we will come and preach the first word of the year. Our theme for this year is pursuing the glory of God's presence. Let's get ready for the word of God. God bless you real, real good. Father, we just want to thank you. 
for keeping us another year. We thank you for making a way for us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for healing us. We just want to declare that you're good. Come on, just put in the comments, say, Lord, thank you for being good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Good 
To God be the glory for the great things that he has done, he is doing, and he continues to do. All of us can be a witness and can testify that God has been better than good to us. In fact, if you're an interactive worshiper, I would that you would put it in the comment section right now. Lord, you've been better than good to me. The fact that we've made it on the other side of a brand new year is just proof positive of the fact that God's grace and mercy still prevails. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God thanks in every place that we are on this day. God be praised. Today, I'm going to invite your attention to the Old Testament book of Psalms, Psalm 42. And there I'm going to lift verses 1 through 5 in our hearing. Our focus for this year is pursuing the glory of God's presence. We're pursuing the glory of God's presence. And I want to preach about that throughout the course of this month virtually. I want you even now to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, invite your family members in your home to tune in uh, to this message and let's receive the direction of God and the blessing of God together. Psalm 42, beginning with verse 1, says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And I want to preach for a few moments as the Spirit of God shall guide from the theme, 
I'm thirsty for God. If you're an interactive worshiper, I want you to put that in the comment section. I'm thirsty for God. I'm thirsty for God. By the time of our text, my dear brothers and sisters, the writer of this psalm expresses a passionate desire for the presence of God. Biblical scholars argue that it is a psalm that King David wrote while on the run from his own son Absalom, who at the moment had overtaken the throne of Israel. But this psalm also has its origins as a hymn from Numbers chapter 16, where the sons of Korah, who were the sons of Moses' cousin, also tried to usurp the leadership of Moses. The story is told in Numbers 16 how they revolted against Moses and expressed their disdain of him as the mouthpiece and set man of God to lead Israel. They went back and forth as to who made Moses the prince over God's people? Who made Moses the arbitrator between the people and God? It became so divisive that God told Moses to separate the congregation from the Korahites. And his judgment at Moses' command would open up the earth and swallow them up into the pit of hell. And so it happened on the next day that Moses separated the people from those that had revolted against him. And then he called forth the power of God to open up the earth. And the earth swallowed up those Korahites. And yet, on the very next day, some of the people had the nerve and the unmitigated gall to complain to Moses that he had caused God to kill the Korahites. So God <laughs> did it again. He told Moses, separate the congregation from those complainers and he would kill them too. Now, it would seem to me, my dear brothers and sisters, that people would learn by observation and not make the same mistakes that they have seen others make so that they themselves would not have to experience the same consequences. How many times have we told our children and our children's children that fire will burn you. How many times have we tried to give advice to enable wisdom so that people would not go down the same road, down the same paths, make some of the same bad decisions that we've made so that we could prevent them from dealing with the consequences that we've had to deal with. And yet, some people are so stubborn that they are determined to do it their own way. And yet this text reveals to us that people can be very disconnected from reality, responsibility, and of reverence for God. The reality is that they went against the man of God. It upset God. God killed them, and yet, there were those who still couldn't be responsible to that reality. And they could not be connected to the reverence of God. Subsequently, my dear brothers and sisters, the narratives of the Korahites revolt against Moses and Absalom's revolt against his own father, David, really do mirror each other, and they expose how dysfunctional 
relatives of the same family can be toward one another. And at the heart of it all is really the disconnect from the reverence of God. Throw out the reality of the situation. Throw out the responsibility that everybody has to, to one another in the situation and consider, if you will, the disconnect from the reverence of God. While the people made it about Moses and David, they really demonstrated their disconnect from and their disrespect of God. And that's not only the context of this text, but it's also the context of our times. We, my dear brothers and sisters, I dare say, are living in a season where too many people are content with living far away from God. It is no wonder that people can manifest the evil and wickedness of the flesh without a conscience or concern for its impact on others. We hate and hurt people all to try to make ourselves happy. We envy and we covet what other people have, all while being ungrateful for what it is that we have. And to make matters worse, those of us who are supposed to be children of God refuse to serve God with our time, our talents, and our treasures. We don't love God like we used to. And we don't have a sense anymore that we owe God anything. When the last time I checked, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The last time I checked, the Lord has been our shepherd. He is the one that has prevented us from wanting and from needing. He is the one that has taken care of us. He has provided for us. He sees to it that we overcome the hurdles of life and the devils that are on our trail. How dare we live our lives to ourselves as if we don't owe God everything. So now the Bible says we're on the run, not from the Korah Heights, but from COVID. We're on the run, not from Absalom, but from apathy and ambivalence. We're on the run, I tell you, from an evil that manifests itself as a virus, as violence, as sickness and disease, as injustice and prejudice, and as poverty and disparity. And unfortunately, we're also on the run from our own anointing. Like David, we're on the run from our own God-given authority. And we're on the run from our divine assignments. Many of us, not just over the last two years of the pandemic, but prior to the pandemic, of which I believe led us to the pandemic, have gotten away from God and what God has called us to. We've gotten away from the reverence and the respect of God that we used to have. We've gotten away from that which is pleasing in the sight of God. We've gotten away from living our lives according to the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit to living according to the desires of our flesh and manifesting the wickedness thereof. We've gotten away from God, but thank God that in the midst of David's running, God gave him a word and God gave him a vision. Don't you see it in this text? David his running from Absalom, but in the midst of his run, God gives him a word and a vision. It was a hymn 
of antiquity and an analogy of a deer panting after the water brook. Did you hear what I said? He's running through the wilderness. He's running through the valley. And all of a sudden, in his mind and in his heart, he sees a deer that's panting after the water brook. And scientists tell us that deer pant after the water brook when they are on the run from their predators, when they're trying to escape, when they're trying to revive themselves, when they're running from their predators, they're running to the brook. They run to the brook because the brook gives them what they need to survive and to succeed and to run on to see what the end will be. So David said when he saw this, he was tired. He was exhausted. He, he, he was frustrated. He was anxious. He was ready to give up. But he said, as the deer, my God, pants for the water brook, so my soul thirst for thee, O God. It was in that moment that he forgot about Absalom. It was in that moment that he forgot about who he was running from. And he recognized his own remoteness from the temple of God. The temple of God represented the presence of God. The temple of God was where they met God. The temple of God was that place that gave them the ability to survive and succeed. The temple of God was as the brook was to the deer. And can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that that's the difference between Korah and Moses. That's the difference between Absalom and David. And that's the difference between the church member and the Christian disciple. And that is the recognition of a disconnection from God. And more so, a desire to reconnect with God. The Korahites had gotten away from God, but the Bible says they were content with doing their own thing. But Moses recognized the only way I'm going to survive is I need the presence of God. Absalom was so busy after the power of his father that he got far away from God. But David, while he was on the run from his own son, all of a sudden recognized his need for God. And many of us, I dare say, after these two years of being away from the church building, have now realized that we can't take God's grace and his presence for granted. And I'm preaching this sermon, my dear brothers and sisters, because many of us have gotten away from God. But if we're going to survive and thrive in this next season, we have to recover our thirst for God. Thank God for vaccinations. Thank God for political power. Thank God to be able to get employed and to be employable. Thank God for a roof over your head and for clothes on your back and for shoes on your feet. But my dear brothers and sisters, if we're going to survive in this next season, even when we're able to come back to a building physically, we've got to recover our thirst for God. That's why this year our focus is to pursue the glory of God's presence. We need to pursue the glory of God's presence in our singing, in our serving, in our praying, in our preaching, in our teaching, in our studying, in our giving, and in our living. Subsequently, my dear brothers and sisters, I love this, that David is on the run from his son Absalom. He's on the run 
from an evil that is so pervasive that it's content with being disconnected from the presence and the glory of God. But while he's on the run, he recognizes his own remoteness from the presence of God. And he makes up in his mind that just as the deer pants after the water brook, so does my soul thirst for God. Because there's a hole in my soul that will not be filled except it's filled by the one that created it and the one that died for it in the first place. So the Bible says that while the devil thinks that he has been chasing us, get this, away from God, in all actuality, he is chasing us back to God. Somebody ought to help me preach right there. And you ought to just text it and type it that I thought I was running from the devil, but I ain't running from the devil. I'm running back to God. Yes, yes, I, the devil's been chasing me, but the devil has been putting me back in the place of my priorities where I'm chasing after the presence of God. I, I used to have problems with the theology of that song. I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do because I need you more and more. But now I realize uh, that my disconnection uh, has led me to the point where God is not running from me but now I've got a drive. Uh, I've got a thirst. Uh, I've got a passion on the inside of me that wants God now more than I've ever had God before. So that in 2021, my dear brothers and sisters, it, it became about who and what we were running from. But in 2022, it's about who we are running towards. And for me, it's God. Yes, I don't know about you, but I need you to type it. I need you to text that. And for me, it's God. I, I was running from some stuff last year. But this year, I'm running for God. I'm running toward God. Because the deer has made me realize that I'm thirsty for God. Can, can I preach like I feel it. I'm thirsty for the presence of God. That's why when we come back to church, I don't want to come back the same way that we left. But when we come back to church, I want a different attitude. I want a different drive. I want a different passion. I want a different pursuit. I don't want to preach the same old way. I don't want to sing the same old way. I don't want to shout the same old way. I can do that where I am but I made up in my mind that I want the sincere the authentic the genuine the real presence of God can I preach like I feel it can I preach like I show sure enough feel it somebody ought to text and type I'm thirsty for God that's what I've been missing in my life that's where I, I've, I've come short that's what has, has gotten off kilter that's where I'm missing the mark. I'm thirsty for God's presence. Can I tell you why I found it out in this text? I'm thirsty for God's presence because in his presence we are replenished. That's point number one. I want you to type it and text it. In God's presence we are replenished. I'm going to say it again. In God's presence we are replenished. Replenished. That, that's what the text says. As the deer pants for the water brooks. So my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. There it is. While they continually say to me, where is your God? You see, my dear brothers and sisters, the psalmist is expressing his need for the temple of God watch this and not his need for the throne of Israel rewind y'all missed that he is expressing his need for the temple of God and not his need for the throne of Israel and the people that are around him are asking him where is his God 
because they themselves want to get to they, they want to get back to the power and the posh living of the throne of Israel but David discovered that he was feeding off of the wrong thing and that's why God let David get put out of the throne temporarily so that he could see his need for the temple permanently and sometimes my dear brothers and sisters this sermon is so good and sometimes we we love the thrones of the world so much that we take for granted the temple of God's presence but if we live long enough and wrong enough we will get exhausted without the right fuel and things like depression and fear and a lack of concern and and unhealthy eating and substance abuse and all kinds of foolishness will start settling into our lives and into our existence and we should realize by now that, that the thrones of this world are not sustainable text that type that the thrones of this world are not sustainable you can have all the music shows you can have all the sports you can have all the bars the strip clubs the island vacations the expensive clothes the Netflix, the social media platforms, the television adaptations of real life and all kinds of material things but none of it can satisfy your soul like God that's why Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God that's why the hymnologist said bread of heaven bread of heaven feed me till I want no more he restores my soul that's why I'm still preaching after two years of preaching to just pews and chairs because God restores my soul that's why I still have joy unspeakable and full of glory because God restores my soul that's why I still have faith in God and I still trust in the Lord with all of my heart and I'm leaning not to my own understanding but in all my ways I'm acknowledging God knowing that he will direct my paths and he'll restore my soul somebody ought to shout I'm thirsty for God I'm thirsty for God because because his in his presence we are replenished but then secondly in his presence we are repurposed I need you to type it and text it in his presence we are repurposed I said type it and text it that in his presence we are repurposed I thought y'all knew I was a Bible preacher it's right here in the text when I remember these things I pour out out my soul within me for I used to go with the multitude I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast y'all ain't got it yet you don't understand that David while he's on the run is remembering what it felt like to go to church he was not reminiscing on what it felt like to be the king instead he was reminiscing on what it felt like to be a worshiper did you hear what I said he's not thinking about how he used to sit on the throne he's not thinking about the power that he used to have he's not thinking about the material clothes that he wore he's not thinking about the fine food that he ate he's not thinking about the royal regalia. He's not thinking about uh, all the money and the treasure. He's not thinking about uh, all the concubines and the parties. Uh, no, the Bible says uh, that he's reminiscing uh, on what it felt like uh, to be a worshiper. And can I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are a number of things uh, that we have wanted to become. In fact, that was the question we were all asked uh, when we were growing up 
up and that question was what do you want to be when you grow up well I've grown up now and I have determined that beyond everything else I want to be a worshiper of God somebody ought to type it in text it I want to be a worshiper of God I feel like shouting but I gotta feed you this word because I found out that pastoring is fine and preaching is great and community development is awesome but there is nothing like being a worshiper of God I can remember going to church just like David we would start at Gillis Memorial for morning services we would travel with the pastor to a 3.30 service we then head over to Bethel Temple on Haywood Avenue for the evening shout and by 10 p.m. we would go to the Cornerstone Church of Christ for the late night radio broadcast service and throughout the week we would find a revival or we would go down to Mount Pleasant to the hour of power on Gay and Preston Street and we would go down to New Psalmist for noonday service in downtown Baltimore. No, we weren't preaching and no, we weren't being featured as the guest artist or the guest musician. We were just worshipers. I wish we would get back to a time where people just like going to church because they love worshiping God. I found out that being a worshiper will bless your life. Have I got a witness here? Somebody ought to text it and type it that being a worshiper will bless your life. Thank God for your employment. Thank God for your job. Thank God you're in charge. But I, above everything else, want God to repurpose me as a worshiper because worshiping will bless your life with positions, with possessions, with promotions. But above all, it will give you peace. Did you hear what I said? I'm still in the text because for the deer to drink from the water brook, he had to stop running and stop worrying about his enemy that was chasing him. And that's what happens when you get in to the presence of God. You stop worrying about your enemies. You stop worrying about your problems. You stop worrying about the pandemic. You stop worrying about hell hounds being on your trail. Somebody shout, I'm a worshiper. Well, I got to quit. I got to close. But the Bible says, I'm thirsty. This year, I'm thirsty for God's presence because in his presence, we are replenished. In his presence, we are repurposed. But then finally, in his presence, we are released. I need you to type it. I need you to text it. We are about to shout everywhere that we are. We are released in his presence. Listen at the text and then we'll shout. Why? David asked himself, are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? And he answers his own question. Hope in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Y'all ain't shouting yet. David realized that he had been holding on to the wrong stuff but the deer panting after the water brook helped him to see God and what really mattered in his life the deer needed the water brooks or even a puddle of water for its own metabolism and its ability to release unnecessary waste y'all ain't helping me preach subsequently David said why is my soul disquieted why is my soul worried why is 
my soul uneasy within me when I have God and God has me. Somebody ought to type that. Somebody ought to text that. I have God and God has me. You ought to say it until you feel it. I have God and God has me. I have God and God has me. That means that we have to let go of the wrong stuff. Let go of the past. Let go of the mistakes. Let go of the stress. Let go of the betrayal. Let go of the stuff that you and I have no control over and let God let God have it and if you let God have it you can say like David for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance y'all ain't shouting yet David said I'm shouting not because I'm getting the throne back I'm shouting not because I'm getting my money back I'm shouting not because I'm getting my loved ones back because I don't know if I'll get back to where I used to be I don't know if I'll get back to what I used to have but just being able to see the countenance of God just being able to see the expression and the evidence of God's grace of God's favor of God's love of God's peace is enough for me to praise him somebody ought to shout his presence is enough for me to praise him so let's get back to being thirsty for God and sing like the hymnologist I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world can afford for me is that your testimony I need the Lord to guide me every day every day as I travel along life's narrow way though afflictions flood my soul I'm determined to reach my goal I've got to have Jesus I've got to have Jesus I've got to have Jesus for I just can't make it I just can't make it I just can't make it by myself you can have this whole world but I take Jesus for mine shout glory shout glory shout glory hallelujah yes my God I'm thirsty for the presence not just of people not just of possessions not just for property I'm thirsty for the presence of of God let that be our aim let that be our agenda let that be our focus and watch everything that has come up against us pass away you can't handle it all by yourself but God can you can't deal with it all by yourself but God can take your hands off let go let God 
have his way all this year whether we're in the building or we're at home we're going to pursue the glory of God's presence God wants to do something in the earth he wants to do something in and through his church he wants to do something in and through you and me will you make yourself available to him will you allow him to be your light and to be your salvation will you strive not after pleasing man but after pleasing pleasing God no more am I looking to be entertained I'm looking to experience and be empowered by the presence of God. Today, you're under the sound of my voice and the Lord is speaking to you. and The Lord is drawing you. He's drawing you not just by a good feeling, but he's drawing you by the enemies that are coming up against you, the problems that you're dealing with, the flesh, the financial problems. God is through all of that saying, come unto me. <laughs> all you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Rest for your weary soul. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you want to trust him by faith, he wants to live in and through you today. I want you to humble your heart, close your eyes and repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your spirit. Be my Lord and be my savior I know you died for me and I know God raised you from the dead for me save me according to my faith and by your word in Jesus name amen listen if you prayed that prayer lightning may not have flashed thunder may not have rolled but the spirit of God did enter into your heart quietly and quickly and I want to help you to cultivate that seed of faith even in your life. There's contact information on the screen. If you contact me, tell us how to contact you. We'll do it within 24 hours. We'll make sure that you are a part of the family of God. And if you desire, you can be a part of the fellowship of our faith. God bless you real, real good. The choir is about to come and bless us with a closing selection but I want you to be blessed. It's a new year. It's a new season. A fresh anointing is blowing your way. Get in to the spirit of God. Get in to the flow of what God is doing. Let's pursue his presence together. Those of you who want to serve in our first impressions ministry, hospitality, security, on our music ministry, our usher ministry I want you to come out to the church this week January the 6th 7 p.m. there'll be ample security uh, with us and we'll begin to move through the flow of how God will bring us back together it won't be long now the day is coming and I look forward to it and now may the God of grace and glory bless you may he surround and sustain you with his presence and with his power, now, henceforth, and forever. And together we say, amen. God bless you. Real, real good.
back to life. We thank you for covering us. We thank you for protecting us. We just want to tell you thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus.
lives in the midst of a pandemic, then we say, you have rescued our lives. Yes, we are still here, you've rescued our lives, and we'll never go. Our response is yes. hallelujah. hallelujah. You're our redeemer. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You brought us over, and our response is hallelujah. 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 